Well, good morning. It is Friday, March the 15th. We're going into the King James Bible, the book of Exodus, chapter 25. And uh, it's going to be another beautiful day. It's up in the 60s, uh, a little bit cloudy today, a little bit windy, but great day the Lord has made. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring me an offering, <clears throat> excuse me, of every man that giveth willingly with his heart, you shall take my offering. And this is the offering which you shall take of them, gold, silver, and brass, and blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine linen, and goat's hair, and ram skins dyed red, and badger skins, and shatim wood, oil for the light, spices for anointing oil, and for sweet incense, onyx stones, and stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate. Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. According to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it. <coughs> Pardon me. And they shall make an ark of shittim wood. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, within and without shalt thou overlay it, and shall make upon it a crown of gold about it. And thou shalt cast four rings of gold for it, and put them in the four corners thereof. And two rings shall be in the one side of it, and two rings in the other side of it. And thou shalt make staves of shittim wood, and overlay them with gold. And thou shalt put the staves into the rings by the sides of the ark, that the ark may be borne with them. The staves shall be in the rings of the ark, and they shall not be taken from it. And thou shalt put into the ark the testimony which I shall give you. And thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And thou shalt make two cherubims of gold, of beaten work shalt thou make them, and in the two ends of the mercy seat. And make one cherub on one end, and the other cherub on the other end. Even of the mercy seat you shall make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. And the cherubims shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces shall look one to another. Toward the mercy seat shall be the, the face of the cherubim's be. And thou shalt put the mercy seat upon the ark, and the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give you. And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim's, which are upon the ark of the testimony, of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. Thou shalt also make a table of shittim wood. Two cubits shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, and make thereto a crown of gold round about and it shall make unto it a border of a hand breadth round about, and thou shalt make a golden crown to the corner thereof round about. And thou shalt make for it four rings of gold, and put the rings in the four corners that are on the four feet thereof. And over against the borders shall be rings for the places for the staves to bear the table. And thou shalt make the staves of shittim wood, and overlay them with gold, that the table may be borne with them. And thou shalt make the dishes thereof, and the spoons thereof, and covers thereof, and bowls thereof, to cover with all. Of pure gold shalt thou make them. And thou shalt set upon the table showbread before me alway. 
and thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold. Of beaten work shall the candlestick be made. His shaft and his branches, his bowls, his knops and his flowers shall be of the same. And six branches shall come out of the sides of it, three branches of the candlestick out of one side, and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side. Three bowls make like unto almonds with a knop and a flower in one branch, and three bowls made like almond in the other branch with a knop and a flower. So in the six branches that come out of the candlestick. And in the candlestick shall be four bowls made like unto almonds with their knops and their flowers. And there shall be a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, according to the branches that proceed out of the candlestick. And their knops and their branches shall be of the same. All it shall be one beaten work of pure gold. And thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof, and they shall light the lamps thereof, that they may give light over against it. And the tongs thereof and the snuff dishes thereof shall be of pure gold. Of a talent of gold, pure gold shall he make it with all these vessels. And look that thou make them after their pattern, which was showed thee in the mount. Wow. How relevant is that to us today? Well, number one, it helps to identify the ark should we ever see it and know what it looks like. Number two, we know that God commanded it to be built. Number three, we know that it should be carried around with staves uh, as well as the show table for the showbread. And we also know that it's going to be made of pure gold, covered in pure gold. Now the lampstand is going to be pure gold. Of a talent of pure gold shall he make it with all these vessels. A talent, I believe, is quite a lot, but I'm not too sure. Um, the cubit mentioned, I seem to remember talking about a cubit was the length from a man's shoulder to the tip of his hand, I think, which was about 22 inches. Um, there are some variants in that, I believe, but... Um, I think there was a standard established, someone did anyway, in archaeology probably, um, because there was no conversion into inches in the Bible, as you may understand. So once we found find things and it was discovered that it said, you know, how many cubits? Well, we measured it and our measurements and, and broke it down. And I think that was the length. Um, So this is interesting phase now of Exodus because we're going to go through over the next few chapters like this, a couple of chapters. And it's, it's incredible detail. And you say, well, why would God want this much detail? Well, number one, I guess, because there's obedience. You know, if you're saying you're going to be obedient to me, if you say, as the people said, um, let's see, back in chapter 24, verse 7, And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people, and they said, All that the Lord hath said, we will do and be obedient. Well, God's saying, okay, I'm going to be very specific here. How obedient can you be? Well, it turns out that they... Pretty obedient to a point. So let's see how far this goes, this level of obedience. Let's see where it takes them. Let's see how easy it is to be obedient to God or how difficult it is to be obedient to God. But now we're talking about the ark and the mercy seat. This is where God is going to appear before them. Now again, we've heard that God... We cannot look upon the face of God. So it kind of makes me wonder if there's an actual mercy seat upon the ark. Who 
who do you think appeared before the high priest, before Moses at that time? Who do you think appeared before Aaron and the Levites? I gotta say, I, I, I'm not too sure, okay? I'm not too sure how the appearance was. We'll find out as we go through this. But we know we cannot look upon the face of God. But Jesus, whenever anybody sees God, although he's not named as Jesus, he's named as the angel with been given God's name, um, I would say it's him that he appears. So we'll find out as we go through. Don't forget, this is getting to know God. And, you know, we may tend to think of God as some sort of ethereal deity that's up there and has lots of important things to be worried about and, you know, manners of state around the world and people to watch and wars to govern and things going on, you know, that he really doesn't care about little old Chris Gemmett in Arnsville, Pennsylvania. But he does. He knows every hair on my head. My name is written in the palm of his hand. And his pl the same applies for you. He knows every detail about you. He knows your very thoughts. He knows your heart. He can see inside of you. And if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he is inside of you. So that makes it pretty easy to see you, doesn't it? So every thought that we have, every action that we perform, we're being scrutinized, we're being watched, we're being seen. And he does all this because he loves you. Think about it. When you've got a young child, when you were raising up your children, you wanted to keep your eye on those kids all the time. I'm not going to comment on today's <clears throat> parenting methods, but I, I sure wanted to be with my kids uh, as much as possible. I wanted to know everything about them, what was going on. I did. I love my children. And I never stop loving them. God never stops loving us. And I love you too. Have a great day. Don't forget, the Browders are coming 7 o'clock tonight, Mountaintop Ministries, 200 Church Road, or Tana, PA. Be there or be square. It's going to be a great weekend. Tonight, tomorrow night, Sunday morning, 8 o'clock service, Sunday morning, 10 o'clock service, and I do believe Sunday evening at 7 o'clock. A fantastic Browders weekend of praise and worship and glory with Matthew and I believe Tommy preaching, and it's just going to be wonderful. Not to be missed. Not to be missed. A great time to be spending and praising the Lord. Speak to you tomorrow. Bye for now.